Let us talk about the cavernous sinus in detail. Let's talk about cavernous sinus in more detail. And with that, in the cavernous sinus, guys, we'll talk about the first we'll talk about the incoming channels, outgoing channels of cavernous sinus, and then we will discuss about the relations of cavernous sinus. Look, cavernous sinus, we said, first of all, just a few points about it. It is the largest dural venous sinus. It is the largest dural venous sinus, that is a cavernous sinus. Number two, where it is situated? It is situated in middle cranial fossa. It is situated in the middle cranial fossa. The cavernous sinus is situated in the middle cranial fossa. And when it is situated in the middle cranial fossa, uh, it is on either side of cella tersica or pituitary fossa. on the either side of cella tersica, on both the side of pituitary fossa it is present. To understand the cavernous sinus, its incoming outgoing channels and everything, so let's let's discuss those channels first. And as I said, then we will discuss about the, the relations of the cavernous sinus, which are very, very important, guys. Cavernous sinus is something which can be asked as a separate question also, a short note, and in some time they can ask you a long question also, though the chances of long question is little, like not uh, very much, but yeah, the uh, not note on the cavernous sinus is very much possible. In that, you have to discuss about the the incoming outgoing channels and the relations of cavernous sinus both. And we have some very interesting clinical anatomy also related to that. So, guys, first we are talking about the incoming and outgoing channels of cavernous sinus. Look, guys, cavernous sinus are present in the middle cranial fossa. Let's say there's a right and the left side cavernous sinus is there. So that's a cavernous sinus present in the middle cranial fossa. In between them, we got pituitary fossa or cella tersica. Now, if this is the area of the cella tersica, obviously pituitary fossa, the pituitary gland will be present here. So let's say this is the area of the cella tersica. And in this cella tersica area, obviously the pituitary fossa will be present here. This is where the pituitary fossa will be present. And let's say this is the pituitary gland. I'm just writing here pituitary gland, PG, pituitary gland here, just to. Guys, first thing first, both cavernous sinus are connected to each other also. And these are called as an intercavernous sinus. Like we have an anterior intercavernous sinus connecting the right side cavernous sinus to the left one, just in front of the pituitary fossa like this. And there is a posterior intercavernous sinus is also there. Anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus, which just simply call them intercavernous sinus. I'm writing in short only. That is anterior intercavernous sinus. And this is posterior intercavernous sinus. Please write them, write the full form somewhere. That is anterior intercavernous sinus and posterior intercavernous sinus. The blood coming into the cavernous sinus comes from various sources and just, just a schematic picture only. That's not the, the, the actual image. So I'm telling you that cavernous sinus receives the blood from three sources, guys. It will receive the blood from the orbit because superior orbital fissure is just present in front of it. Superior orbital fissure is just in front of the cavernous sinus. It is an anterior of cavernous sinus. This is superior orbital fissure. Now imagine if this is a superior orbital fissure. That means some tributaries from the orbit will come in and drain to cavernous sinus. So that means one of the incoming source for the blood to the cavernous sinus is from where? From the orbit. Now whatever veins are those, just write the orbit here. The orbit veins will drain into cavernous sinus, number one. Some of the veins which are coming from the brain will drain into it. And some of the vein or some of the dural venous sinus will directly drain into it. So we have Incoming channel coming from orbit. We have incoming channel from meninges. Meninges. That means some dural venous sinuses. Some dural venous sinuses directly drain into cavernous sinus. And then finally we said some of the veins will come from the brain also to drain into the cavernous sinus. So when 
I will discuss the the all these incoming channels of cavernous sinus. I'll be talking about all these guys. Incoming channels of cavernous sinus will come from three sources: from the orbit, number one; from the meninges, number two; and from the brain, number three. So the the same on the other side also. Like as I told you, just these arrows are just schematic arrows only to tell you that okay, cavernous sinus receives the blood from various sources first, and then it drains the blood. Now what I request you guys, just leave the space behind for now. Leave the space behind because I'll be utilizing this space here. First, let's talk about the incoming channels. We'll come back to this diagram and we'll talk about the outgoing channels also here. So I'm going to leave that picture that that way only. What are the outgoing uh, incoming channels of cavernous sinus? First, we are talking about the incoming channels. Incoming channels are also called as it the tributaries. Incoming channels or tributaries of cavernous sinus. Incoming channels or tributaries of cavernous sinus. Now the incoming channels or tributaries of cavernous sinus includes number one from the orbit. From the orbit, what veins from the orbit are draining the blood into the cavernous sinus? Well, the veins which are coming from the orbit and draining the blood into cavernous sinus it includes the superior ophthalmic vein. There is a superior ophthalmic vein. And we got this inferior ophthalmic vein also. Superior ophthalmic and inferior ophthalmic vein. In the orbit, we have an artery that is ophthalmic artery. The vein is a superior ophthalmic and inferior ophthalmic vein. And sometimes central vein of retina also, guys. There is a vein which is present in the center of the optic nerve. When you'll do the histology of the optic nerve, you'll see okay, inside the optic nerve, there is a central artery of retina and central vein of retina. So that central vein of retina sometimes drains directly into cavernous sinus. So there could be and it's like it may or may not be there as a direct tributary it's the central vein of retina central vein of retina also may drain the blood into the cavernous sinus so these are three incoming channels from the orbit draining the blood into cavernous sinus brain some of the vein from the brain drain the blood into cavernous sinus one of the vein is called as superficial superficial middle cerebral vein look guys we will talk about these veins in the neuroanatomy only so just for now you just need to write the names of the vein only there's a vein called a superficial middle cerebral vein whatever this vein is wherever it is coming from superficial middle cerebral vein and there is another vein called as an inferior remember it's inferior not internal inferior cerebral vein that is inferior cerebral vein superficial middle cerebral vein and inferior cerebral vein now let us say guys if this is a picture of the cerebral hemisphere just a rough representation of the where it is present the cavernous sinus is situated just below the brain only like this is where the cavernous sinus is situated so one of the tributary incoming channel is coming from the brain it actually comes along the sylvian sulcus it runs along the sylvian sulcus and comes down and drains the blood into cavernous sinus this is called as superficial middle cerebral vein that is superficial middle cerebral vein and the one which is running along the lower surface only and drains the blood into the cavernous sinus that is inferior cerebral vein. Just to give you a broad idea about that where these veins are present. So one is on the inferior surface and one is present on the superior lateral surface in the in this sylvian sulcus comes down and drains the blood into cavernous sinus. These are the two incoming channels of the cavernous sinus coming from the brain. The two of the vein from the brain directly drain into cavernous sinus. Now understand one thing. What about the other veins of the brain? they will drain into other sinuses also guys like we have a sinus here some of the veins will drain the blood into the superior striatal sinus some of the veins will drain the blood into the the transverse sinus will be there so that we will discuss in the the the, the blood supply of the brain only in the neuroanatomy we will discuss the arterial supply and the venous drainage of the brain then you will see okay there are multiple veins coming from the brain some of them goes into the superior striatal some into the transverse sinus there are another vein also but the one which are coming from the brain and directly running into cavernous sinus it is superficial middle cerebral and then we have this inferior cerebral vein. And finally, we have like we said two from the uh, three from the orbit, two from the brain and then from the meninges also guys. Meninges. Which are the tributaries which are coming from meninges? Like one of them is called as a sinus that is a sphenoparietal sinus. 
there is a sinus called as a sphenoparietal sinus sphenoparietal sinus and then just like a middle meningeal vein there is a middle meningeal sinus also there is a middle meningeal sinus guys that is a middle meningeal sinus so sphenoparietal sinus and middle sinus sinus these are the one which are draining the blood into the cavernous sinus directly so three from the orbit two from the brain and these two dural venous sinus going directly and draining into the cavernous sinus sphenoparietal sinus and middle meningeal sinus this is overall the incoming channels of cavernous sinus now sir, guys we know that cavernous sinus is situated in the middle cranial fossa and it is receiving the blood from the orbit from the superior orbital fissure some veins will come into it it is receiving some veins coming from the brain and it is receiving some blood from the directly from the dural venous sinus only that is sphenoparietal and middle meningeal sinus so this is about the incoming channels now the question is about the outgoing channels before we write down the outgoing channels let me take you back to this picture now for the outgoing channels guys let's put it this way in the posterior cranial fossa here we have foramen magnum that that's a foramen magnum i'm placing it here that is foramen magnum the outgoing channels of cavernous sinus one was the superior petrosal sinus we know that one is a inferior petrosal sinus right and superior petrosal and let's say that's a inferior petrosal we know superior petrosal drains into the the transverse inferior petrosal is the one which is going from the uh, the jugular foramen to meet with the sigmoid sinus so this is the sps that is sps that is superior petrosal sinus if i may write like this superior petrosal sinus and that is a inferior petrosal sinus so we know these are the obviously the two major outgoing channels here no no doubt about that it is also been noted that cavernous sinus it is connected to a venous plexus which is present in the posterior cranial fossa and that venous plexus here is called as a basilar venous plexus there is a venous plexus present here called as a basilar venous plexus it is present on the clivus the slope present in the posterior cranial fossa and this venous plexus is called as a basilar basilar venous plexus this basilar venous plexus is communicating or you can say it is it is contributed by the various tributaries like posterior intercavernous sinus will contribute to it cavernous sinus directly will contribute to it inferior petrosal sinus will contribute to it. that's why, that's why it's a plexus it's a network of the the veins which is present in the posterior cranial fossa which is having a contribution from cavernous sinus posterior intercavernous sinus inferior petrosal sinus all of them together forming this venous plexus now we'll, i'll tell you the significance of this plexus more about this in a while first let me write down the outgoing channels of the cavernous sinus we already saw the multiple incoming channels from the orbit brain and meninges what about the outgoing channels of cavernous sinus we'll come back to the diagram in in a minute guys outgoing channels are also called as the drainage channels the outgoing channels also called as the drainage channels outgoing channels or the drainage channels of the cavernous sinus well what are the outgoing channels or drainage channel of cavernous sinus you already know that one of them is the superior petrosal sinus now there is one surprise entry also here one is the superior petrosal sinus one is inferior petrosal sinus superior petrosal inferior petrosal and then there is another one guys and this might come as a surprise to you this is the superior ophthalmic vein superior ophthalmic vein you will like what how can superior ophthalmic vein is an outgoing channel superior ophthalmic vein is an incoming channel when we wrote the incoming channel we said superior ophthalmic inferior ophthalmic central vein retina so how can you have superior ophthalmic vein in the outgoing channel guys it is possible because superior ophthalmic vein is an emissary vein and you all know that emissary veins are veins without valve so if there is no valve inside that means the blood can come in also and blood can go out also if there is no valve let's say this 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 stylus here is representing the uh, emissary vein so cavernous sinus can push the blood out through this emissary vein that is a superior ophthalmic vein and sometimes the blood from the outside can come through superior ophthalmic vein into the cavernous sinus so it may act as a incoming channel also it may act as a outgoing channel also so both are possible that's why superior ophthalmic vein need to be counted at both the places because there is an emissary vein a vein without a valve 